So I was not on the program because if I was, half of you would not show up. So <laughs> that's why it's a surprise. Um, okay, I'm gonna wait for my music to get done. And while the music plays, if anyone wants to step outside because of language, please do. I have a filthy mouth, so I will not judge you. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay. So there's something that I have always struggled with, and that is my inability to deal with bullshit. There is just so much of it, it's, it's, it's everywhere. But I think I may have finally found a way to deal with it. Allow me to explain. So, so a few years ago, when the US midterm election cycle was in full swing, I was consuming news at a very unhealthy level. Now, this was a time when uh, Arizona, our wonderful state, had just passed a law called SB 1070. Now, <laughs> this was a law that allowed cops to pull you over and ask you for your papers just because you were brown. And, and the lawmakers claimed that this had nothing to do with race and it would just help make Arizona safer. But what they were really saying was, racial profiling, we don't do that here. Now let's go get that brown asshole. <laughs> and, and this was a time where this kind of bullshit was coming in from all sides. And I was, I was just not sure what to do. In fact, I have a photo of myself from those days. <laughs> I used to have a lot more hair back then. It's just, it's, it's been a struggle. Uh, and so uh, I really felt that to stay sane, I had to do something. And, and so I began to make art in response to all of the things that were upsetting me. All of the things that I thought were bullshit. I, I looked at all of this incoming bullshit, and I, and I began to respond with bullshit of my own. Um, I, was, I was frustrated with the Republicans, a lot. <laughs> yeah. I was also frustrated with the Democrats. And, and that's a real Democrat. That's a real Democrat there, has, has no balls. And so, uh, <laughs> um, and I did a whole series of these posters. Um, and they were part of a larger audio and video exhibit called A Bunch of Croc. Um, and A Bunch of Croc was all about me. It was a way for me to try and feel better <laughs> about trying to make a home in Arizona in post 9-11 America. But it was also my Howard Beale moment. It was an opportunity for me to yell obnoxious and outrageous things. And, and when I began to post all of this stuff online, and <laughs> um, something strange began, I almost feel bad for that one. Uh, Pea Party is an easy target. You're so stupid. So, um, when I posted this stuff online, something strange began to happen. What was mostly meant as catharsis for me, it, it began to resonate with random strangers. Um, other than the occasional, you are a moron comment, which I enjoyed very much, most of the feedback that I received made it very clear that there are a whole bunch of other people out there also in need of this kind of catharsis. And so now I want to take this idea a step Further, a bunch of crock was about things that I thought were bullshit, but now I'm making art about things that other people think are bullshit. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and so recently I've started a story collecting project where I take other stories of bullshit and, and I turn them into, uh, into posters, animations, videos, audio stories, and more. Uh, let me show you an example. So I have this three-year-old son who's mostly potty trained, but occasionally he still has accidents. Like yesterday, he had a little poop accident, and here's how that went. I asked him what happened, and he said, I don't know, I didn't make that poop, that poop isn't mine. And I said, that poop 
that's in your pants. It's not yours? And he's like, nope, it's daddy's. So I said, daddy pooped in your pants. And he goes, yes, yes he did. Daddy pooped in my pants. Why do hot dogs come in packs of eight, but buns only come in packs of six? The only way to make this combination work is if I got 24 of each. Fuck, that's a lot of wieners. <laughs> My dad was an asshole. That is a fact. One day, 10 years ago, he vanished. This was after we discovered that he had been living a secret life. He had been lying about a lot of things, from the mundane to the outlandish. Instead of dealing with confrontation, he just vanished. No one could find him. No one heard from him for a very long time. A few years later, a friend sent me a scan of an obituary page. It was my dad's. He had died without ever trying to reach out to us or to possibly right his wrong. Nothing was resolved. I received this letter just a few days ago from the person who sent in that story about their dad. And, and this is the first time I'm sharing this with anyone. Um, um, and uh, allow me to read you the letter. It says, I want you to know how much your animation of my story means to me. When I watched it, I started crying. It was the first time I've ever cried about the whole situation. But seeing it from the outside, someone else reading it, someone else animating it, it gave me the distance I needed to see for what it is, a sad, bullshit story, not just something that happened to me. And, and this letter kind of, of put things in, in perspective for me. When I read it, I just, I just sat there thinking about the whole thing for a little bit. And, and what I've realized is that as I work on these projects, what I've learned and, and, and what I continue to learn is that, is that life can be difficult. It can be full of challenges. Uh, it can be full of bullshit. But sometimes a little bit of creativity and a little bit of humor can help you get through. And that's what my art does for me, and that's what I hope it can do for others as well. Thank you. <laughs>